just recently, uh, I would say about two or three months ago, we, um, I came here to Fearman's specifically to protest and to come and bear witness for the pigs and to give them water and to see them a few minutes before they go and head into slaughter. And Reagan was here and she spoke about an amazing documentary that friends of hers had put out and there was going to be a premiere in Hamilton called uh, Sled Dogs. And it was quite interesting because me and another animal activist friend of mine, who's the organizer of uh, New Wave Activism, Sabrina, we carpooled along and went to see the documentary, which was very, very... Uh, <laughs> revealing. <laughs> revealing, sad, yes. uh, yeah. you know, heart-tearing. Yeah. It was very war hard to watch. Um, and we had quite eventful things happen <laughs> during that premiere. So we had, uh, we call them what, mushers? Mushers are the people who uh, are in charge of taking care of the sled of their sled dogs, and uh, they started kind of raising questions at the end of the, the documentary, as if what was being portrayed wasn't real. Um, although what was being portrayed was actually all caught on camera, like during the documentary, it was just things and facts that were actually happening. So I would like to know here, Reagan, uh -huh. what's your opinion on, you know, what happened not only that night at the premiere, but what you've seen from your experience um, in the sled dog industry and yeah. what has followed up after that? Because yeah. I kind of left yeah. and don't know what happened after, right? Yeah. Well, the, the film was produced by Fern Levitt, a, a Hamilton girl. She was in school with me many, many years ago. And she went on a, on a sled dog venture, just, you know, totally... Uh, uh, naive about how the the business was run and she decided she was going to do a film on the dogs yeah. and when she started looking into it she re she was invited onto six yeah. sled dog uh, industries yeah yeah my nose is running oh <laughs> <laughs> hang on I got a Kleedex here <laughs> it's a little cold this morning <laughs> very cold out here <laughs> and uh, she um she was invited on the uh, on the premises, and these people were proud of the way they looked after these dogs, and uh, they're chained 24/7 for the majority of their lives, unless they're training to pull sleds or actually making money for the owners pulling the sleds. They have a six-foot chain. They have a, usually a plastic barrel that they sleep in. They urinate, defecate, eat, sleep, and their whole life is within this radius. And she was shocked. She was invited on, and they're they're proud of the of what they were doing, and she produced this film. It took two years, and it's an amazing expose yes. of what goes on because people think, like, even me being involved in animal yeah. rights as long as I had been, I didn't know that that's how they lived. How would I know, really, Same. until somebody goes in and exposes yes. it? So that night, some mushers were there, and they were yelling out and challenging the veracity of of, and, and she said. You guys invited us there. We only recorded what you allowed us to yeah. see. Yeah. A dog frozen in the snow. And there's this lady going, oh, oh, poor Misty, you yeah, know. We must have lost him overnight. Yes, what happened? How could this happen, you know? Completely cold. A hundred, like, yeah. This is a normal thing. Yes. This is a normal thing in the industry. Yeah. Oh, whoops, we yeah. lost it overnight. Yeah, puppies wandering around. So anyway, um, we decided to do an action and go to her place as a matter Matter of fact, there must have been Recently, about right? yeah. It was just a month ago. I heard about it. That's why I was like, okay, yeah, more on this. Yeah. <laughs> so we had a red team and a green team, and the green team stayed outside and dealt with the press and um, the police and and getting the red team there. I was on team red, and yes. uh, we went to the back of the property and we had to go through. It was uh, it was frozen. It was really really cold that day, but there was un. Uh, uh, thawed marsh underneath so my feet were pretty much soaked by the time we got to the dogs 110 dogs chained outside they have no interaction with each other their chains are short and uh, the barking and the I mean it was they were all lovely dogs surprisingly too they're not all husky breeds I would say maybe a quarter of them have those husky coats and the husky breeds most of them were like average dogs you'd see at a pound yeah. 
and they're all starving for attention and they had these blue plastic barrels with a little bit of straw on the bottom but I didn't see any insulation in any of these even the wooden boxes and they had a can that was um, nailed to the outside I guess that's for their water I didn't see any water they must get water from time to time from the um, snow. Yeah, they couldn't. They didn't even have any snow because this radius, you see, was all pounded down with their own urine and feces and and running around. And um, so there were 110 of them. We we fanned out and took uh, video footage of it. And by this time, the people came out. One of the mushers came out and uh, attacked Jenny McQueen. Okay. And she wow. had a chain around her neck and was and Jenny was going red and then purple and I was filming it with my camera but I couldn't see Jenny's face on my camera until somebody said we've got to help her and I put the camera down and I went behind uh, this woman just to sort of distract her and Jenny told me afterwards she said I'm glad you did that because I could feel the chain loosen and uh, so she was okay but um, she was I mean I don't know what would have happened to her if, if I and they just came out and assaulted without even see to me that's like you're specifically hi like you you already know you're hiding something you already know what you're doing is wrong yeah and then you come out and assault someone yeah that's trying to defend like yeah I mean she asked us to leave we were rounding up our people and we were leaving we we're prepared to get arrested we knew we were trespassing yeah. this is the only way you can expose yes. it it's private property yes. Yes. it's just like how do we know what they're doing yeah. in there to the pigs exactly. except the people who work there tell us yeah. and uh, we get video footage of it they won't let us in because no. they know what they're doing is wrong exactly exactly so that was my experience yeah wow. this time thank yeah. you so much for sharing that and now do you know if she's still uh airing the documentary is it still available for people to watch is it yeah there's some copyright issues as far as i don't think you can just sort of go online and see the whole thing i think you can see a portion of it okay. um but it's on excellent. YouTube, I'm not. I'm not sure. Yeah. You'd have to check. See, I I rented a theater in Hamilton and sold tickets yeah, 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 as exactly. a fundraiser. I exactly. mean, uh, we paid for the theater yeah. and everything, and yeah. then the money went to uh, to Fern's charity. Yes, yes. Funny thing was, you know, Fern was in school with me. She lived on my street, and uh, I hadn't seen her since graduation day, wow. 1973. And, what? and she was up in Alaska with PETA, and she was looking at people who had signed petitions. They were scrolling by, and she caught my name. Wow. And she contacted me. So cool. I know. So after all these years, she contacted me. Oh, wow. I know. It was so great. That's yeah. amazing. Here are our paths diverged for all these years, and here we are back. And, and, and From we are in a new spot. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Because I've been doing this activism yeah. since 1977 when the seal hunt was really first exposed. Yeah. That's when I got involved. Wow. Yeah. Tell me more about that. That's super interesting. I just read an article in the paper, and honestly, I couldn't believe my ears. You are hitting baby seals over the head and taking their skins off? Yeah. I mean, I was just so shocked, and I thought, I'll make a sign, and I will go down and protest, and it'll all stop. Wow. And you know I what? Love, it did it. <laughs> that was amazing. Like, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yes. That was amazing. There, I've, I'm sure I've, I've uh, managed, because as soon as everybody knows, how could it possibly continue? Yeah, exactly. It's right? horrendous. You that's know. what you would think. I, that's what I thought. Every industry that I've ever discovered, that's what I would think. Oh my yes. God, I just need to tell this to people. Yes. And everyone is going to stop. Like, yes. everyone's going to understand. <laughs> everyone has a heart. Everyone yes. has compassion, empathy. Like, there's no way this is going to continue. I know. And yet, we're still here today. We're still here today. That's right. And they're still killing seals. And I knew nothing about the food I was eating or any of that. There was no internet. You know, it was, if it wasn't for Peter Singer's book, Animal Liberation, that was... That was my only insight as to what was going on. Wow. So I joined a group called uh, uh, a fledgling group in Toronto called Arc Two, and uh, there was a baboon that was in, had been in a stereotactic device at uh, university uh, in, uh, at Western in London, uh, and this was the 43rd baboon that had spent a year sitting in a stereotactic device being fed a high cholesterol diet. Then they killed the baboon and looked at the arteries in the heart. It's so been going on for years, and the Heart and Stroke Foundation funded the whole thing. And uh, there were people in Toronto who did a hunger strike and drew it to our attention, me, the general public. Otherwise, how would we know? And it was a whistleblower who took the, the film footage of this poor creature and just sitting in this 
they couldn't move. They, it, all that time, it was heart-wrenching. So, I mean, it, once you open that door as to what's going on, exactly. it is uh, just a world of shock. Yeah. Speciesism is everywhere. Yeah, it Animal is everywhere. Exploitation and abuse is everywhere. Like, yeah. I'm to the point where now I walk into a normal store, which I rarely do because mm -hmm. I spend most of my time in, in vegan places or yeah. with vegan people. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah. my God. And I walk into a normal store and I just look around and everything yeah. that I see is yeah. death. I know. Everything that I see is abuse. Yeah. Everything that I see is exploitation. Yeah. And suffering. We've been sold a bill of goods our entire lives. I know. Me, my parents' generation. It's uh, it is shocking, absolutely shocking, the the lack of regard for the feelings of our fellow Earthlings. It is shocking. Yes, it is. So wow. where I come every Sunday. Yeah. I know. And oh my God, honestly, like since 1973, <laughs> taking action well. to create change in this world. If that's not powerful, like holy I'm trying. crap, I need, I need a high, a high <laughs> five for that. Well, like, I don't, I don't, Jesus. I don't know if it does any good, but of I know, it does. But I know doing How nothing does no I good. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Doing nothing does yeah. no good. Yeah. Taking yeah. no action yeah. makes, creates no, no change, change. Right. But, so How I'm doing something. Different yeah. Results? by doing yeah, nothing that's right but at the end of the day I want you to tell me how many people can you think of that you have touched impacted that have changed their ways yeah. even if it wasn't going full vegan no people that have absolutely changed